some hobby and hangouts with you guys on this fine Thursday afternoon. It's a beautiful Thursday afternoon. No, actually. it's not. It's raining cats and dogs out there. That's true. Maybe it's beautiful That's in your I neck like. of the woods. But this is where I like we're at. It rainy. We've got no sound. Josh, seriously. You are killing me. All right. Well, we're going to guess that there's sound? sound now. Is there sound Does now? sound now? Perfect. Hey, chat. Give us some thumbs up if there's sound. If there's not sound, give us a frowny face. They won't, they won't hear the there's frowny sound. face part, though. Welcome to Atomic Mass Perfect. Transmissions Round Live. Two. Uh, uh, take two? Take two. Take two. Um, your weekly hobby extravaganza oh. of paintitude. Paintitude? Paintitude. Is it, is it paintitude of an unfathomable yeah. magnitude? Yeah. I like it. I'm Dallas Kemp. And I'm Will Schick, and we're here to do some Marvel Crisis Protocol assembly, painting, hobbying with you guys, answering questions, and just talking. So yeah. we're going to dive right in here. What are you painting today, Dallas? I've got one Mr. Crossbones. Ooh, the crossiest of bones. The crossiest of bones. And I'm working on my Zemo. Now, those of you who might have tuned in last Thursday uh, would have seen Dallas and Mai's current sets as they currently mm -hmm. stand with our characters, because we were using our own miniatures at that point. Um, so Zemo is one of the last ones I have out of my core set to do, and those are your last two, right? No, I have, no? I have well, I have uh, Captain America, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I have mm -hmm. Captain Marvel, and Dr. Octopus. So all the captains, basically. It's, it's all like the captains. If your name was Captain, you didn't get painted yeah. yet. You haven't get, well, I saved the best for last. That's fair. So yeah, Zemo, Baron Zemo is my last one, and then I'm going to be doing some assembly on MODOK as well today, I think, just <gasps> taking advantage of the opportunity. I brought my painted, well, yeah. he's not quite done. But he's not quite done. You could be painting him too. Work if, in progress if, MODOK. If we switch to the camera, I can show my MODOK. Do it, Josh. Wrong That's the wrong camera, man. You can do this. Oh, oh bring him over. So, you got to replace uh, him with crossbones. Oh, he's in the background. It's ominous. Look at that. It's ominous and, and scary. His head's too big. All right. Because his mind. I'm going to start on this guy. So one of the one of the big discussions we were having before the stream began is I don't know what color to paint Zemo's pants. So because we've got we've got brown in a lot of the art. We've got black in a lot of the art. He has boots. Typically, I do my boots in black. I don't I like, like brown boots I very like much. Glossy black boots. Yeah, those are nice. And like a brown black leather, like a rich. Yeah, we could do a brown black leather. Rich do that. brown. Why not? Let's get going. I'm gonna make a flesh right. color. You're gonna make a flesh. Crossbones has. Well, I guess he's got. A, you're gonna start with the bare arms on crossbones. Start with the bare arms. See, I would do the exact opposite. I would start with that. I would start with that really fancy black tack gear. And I would get to the skin like last. Well, I always save the flesh for last, though. I'm not a huge fan of painting skin. I find it to be tricky. All right, dark brown black like pants rocking again. Orion. Like rocking a rhyme? No, not like rocking a rhyme. Oh, Zemo. This guy really ruined my day last week. He murdered everybody. Oh, I got to bring it up. Josh is telling me to bring it up. I'm bringing it up. He was one of my. Uh he was the all-star of my He kind of was. I, team. I really like, I mean, one of the, the really cool things about when working on the core set and kind of choosing the characters and doing design, like the big thing for me came down to trying to grab characters. And then if a character might, you know, the heroes are so iconic. <laughs> everybody, everybody wears like a Spider-Man sweatshirt or whatever when they're a kid or you get like the Avengers gear now, like all that stuff. But where's the Baron Zemo hoodie? I need right? a Baron where's, Zemo hoodie. Where's the crossbones like shin guards? Those don't really exist. So for when you're dirt biking. That's for when you're dirt biking. So one of the real big goals from the design standpoint was like, if you can make these characters who are super cool in the comics and like really important and iconic in their own way, as foils to these really well-known heroes. If you can make people excited to play them, if playing the character makes you want to know more about the character in the comic, to me that was like a huge goal. And I remember when we started playtesting the core set and everyone was like, who's this Baron Zemo guy? Like, what's he all about? And I think even you were kind of, yeah, Zemo, meh, meh. And then everyone started playing him and he became like one of the fan favorites really quick in our testing just because he's so fast and cool. It was very exciting to see. He's a master swordsman. I told people, I was like, you're going to get suddenly Zemo'd, and then, and then you'll understand. I and this guy's fast. 
You're going to paint this guy fast? Oh, yeah. Hmm. Don't you paint everything fast, though? Isn't that like sometimes. what you do? So tell us a little bit about your approach there, Dallas. Like, what are you doing? What's happening? I want to use primarily washes to achieve a quick and effective tabletop standard yeah. to my crossbones. So the goal will be um, I primed my crossbones in a zenithal manner. Um, if you're unfamiliar with that technique, it's basically um, I prime a miniature black and then I use a white or a gray to create like a directional light source, um, leaving a small bit of black showing. And now I'm just going to use washes to go over top of that to, uh, to get my base layers down. It's very quick. It's very effective. I just blurp that all over the pants. <coughs> so, so what, was, was, what was that word? Blurp. Blurped? That's, it's, a, it's technical. It sounds like an onomatopoeia. I've heard paint blurp Blurped. before. Blurped. It's pretty It's good. like if you were tiny and you were standing right next to the drop of paint, you would have heard it blurp. You'd have heard it blurp? Yeah. I'm pretty sure you'd be running for your life if you were tiny standing next to a drop of paint. That, yeah, because you'd get blurped. Uh, the great blurpening. I like this. Uh, this but really, yeah, really the Zenith adds here. like an automatic shadow mm -hmm. uh, to your miniature, so it adds some atmosphere and some depth. And then I'm just going to accentuate with my wash. Yeah, it's a really, it's a really good technique, and you can do it with primer cans. You can do it with an airbrush. It's really easy to do with an airbrush, actually. Mm -hmm. But I did mine with an airbrush. You have to be. I got one in the studio. You have one at the studio, one at home. Come on now. You got airbrushes in your car, I bet. They're in my pockets right now. They're not in your. You don't have pocket brushes. Airbrush pocket. That is the one disappointing thing after knowing you for so long. You've never had pocket brushes. Or holsters. Just walk around <laughs> like airbrushing my holsters. That That's a Gen Con right there. That's what we need in our life. You hear my spurs jingle jangle as I, your spurs jingle. As I approach an airbrush booth. What questions do we have, Josh? Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, we were asking about what... What? Yes. We, we yes. A lot about what paints you're using. So right now, so the ones that we have in front of us are Vallejo, and most of them are from the Game Color line. Sorry, I dropped it. That's my bad. Um, most of them are from the Game Color line. You you totally changed that on me, didn't you? Now my arms are all. You sir need up. a gimbal. I do. Well, he he's messing with it. You know, it's like it's live. Um, but yeah, but as far as like when you're airbrushing stuff, or just working like you can use any paint you want really doesn't make a huge difference use what you like but the Vallejos are pretty nice they're you can find them like everywhere and they have a good range of color especially once you start exploring all the different lines I think we might have flown too close to the sun on this highlight but I'll bring it back down that's all right you know like you can never highlight too much. That is untrue. Patently untrue, I'm going to say. It's a philosophy thing. <laughs> is it? Is that it's, where we're going yeah, with it? I, it's, this is your answer to, well, I might have said something wrong, but it's a philosophy thing. You can't argue with it. You can't. Uh, I mean, the, the, the idea is like uh, many painters I see and um, looked at and give critiques or taught classes to, one of the very... Uh, common critiques I have is highlight more. Like, don't be afraid to highlight, right? So philosophically, you can't highlight too much. Now, of course, you can blow out the highlights very quickly, but you should. You you really want to push your highlights. That's a very common common thing I see in paintings. Well, one of the fun things about these characters in specific is it's like comic book characters in general, especially Marvel, they're so they're so bright. They're so they're so rewarding yeah. when you get nice sharp colors. I am thinking about teaching that class I don't want to talk about the specifics of the class. <laughs> but well, it, But we'll talk around teaser, the class. We'll talk teaser, around the class. Teaser uh the what we were talking about earlier, that class I was telling you about earlier, uh that I thought about but never have really developed. I think that might actually be a good class. Or two of them, actually, but whatever. <laughs> I think you know what I'm talking about. I do. I know, I know <laughs> what we're talking about here. 
Apparently, I'm not going to say anything about it, though, because I don't want to spoil it since you decided that it was going to spoil the thing. We have another question. Yeah. Um, I have an answer. From Cranky Old, old Nerd. Will there be any how-to paint guides included with the model or in miniature and uh, some recommended colors to achieve what's on the fo box photo-wise? Probably not. Um, uh, probably not. We can uh, answer those kind of questions in our live streams or uh, maybe, uh, something like that. Yeah, and I'm sure there'll be... But there's no hobby guides coming with the, with the product. No. I'm, oh. I'm your hobby guide. We're, this is oh. your hobby guide right here. This is it? This, this is, is it. This is the hobby guide? Yeah, I mean, part of that was just, you know, we don't want to, we don't want people to feel limited in how they explore the colors. If you have a favorite paint line or you've been painting for a long time or you haven't painted at all, everybody has access to different stuff. And so we kind of, our philosophy has been a lot just showing how we do things, answering questions and trying to develop different techniques to show off and then go from there like find your own way nobody paints the same way nor should you we have another question from uh, striker 911 which one of the paint hey striker hi striker 911 uh, i know that guy which one of the current models shown have you enjoyed painting the most like i, I guess mm -hmm. you mean some of the core set from the core set from the core set um so far i've Totally, well, not from the core set, but from first wave. Like, Modoc is just a blast to paint. I thought just just a riot. Such a unique design. Such an iconic design, right? Um, so really had fun painting Modoc And what else have I painted? Oh, <laughs> Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Spider-Man just paints up. Is so quick. So fun. Because, like... But we were talking about this the other the other day or even this morning and I was like, <laughs> it's like, you know, everybody's got that one character that you just love and you can't wait to put paint on and you kind of have that trepidation where you're like, oh, I really I have to do right by this character because they're my boy or my girl and Spider-Man for me is the whole reason that I got into Marvel in the first place. Like mom picked up some Spider-Man comics for me when I was six. She's like, I think you'll like these. It's like, well, you're right. I do really like these. So getting the chance to paint him, and you look at him, and you're like, that's a really, it could be a really challenging design. He's got webs everywhere, you know, and, and but you can paint, you can paint that Spider-Man in, I think mine took two hours. It turned out great. We've seen, you did one in an hour. It looks amazing. It's so, so fun. You know, I mean, when we were, when we were, when we were designing him uh, and working with him, getting ready to send him to, uh, the next phase, of the, there was a lot of discussion and a lot of how do we make, I mean, it's with every mentor, right? It's like, I try to always think, well, how do we make this fun, right? How do we, uh, the end user, right? You, you've you known me a long time and I, I bring up the end user constantly. Yeah, I mean, that, that's the point, right? It's, you can make a amazing piece of miniature art, but if it doesn't make a fun if it doesn't make a fun miniature to assemble, to paint, if it's not rewarding, then, or if you have to have an insane amount of skill to make it look its best, that's, you know, that's, that's fine. There, there's definitely miniatures out there that are great that way, but that wasn't what we really wanted or have ever wanted. We have another quick question. Um, so is regular plastic glue or is super glue recommended? You can use either, use either, and you'll get different answer, answers from this table because I will tell you that plastic glue is so superior for hard plastic kits. But Dallas is still very much on the super glue front. So I'll use them both. Yeah. I'll use them both. <laughs> sure. But yes, it's, you can use whatever you're comfortable with. But the plastic does, does totally allow for plastic glue. <laughs> Just like any kind of, you know. Look, one thing about me, kit. it's whatever's nearest to my hand when I need it. Sure, sure. Like we were talking about paintbrushes the other day, and somebody goes, "What size?" And I was like, "Well, I realized the other day I was painting something, and I was like an hour in, and I was like using two threes, so you know." <laughs> <laughs> Look, as long as it's got a great tip, it doesn't actually yeah. matter. I, you get that question on paintbrushes a lot, and then everybody has their own opinions on paintbrushes, but. I really only use a two and a and a one. 
Every once in a while, I'll switch to like a zero or something, but if you got a great tip on the brush, then you really don't need to worry about it too much. I think that brown turned out pretty good. Good tip, tiny barrel, or a big barrel. So we got, we got dark brown pants. Now I guess I have to paint something else on this guy. Do the purple. Do the purple. All right, I'm gonna shut him down, Josh. You should switch off of me for a second because I gotta prep my next paints here. I mean, have we just been on you the whole time? No, I don't. I don't know. I get I get motion a lot by Josh, so I assume. He's switching. He's switching. See, that's mm -hmm. what he's doing. He's making it exciting and dramatic, but not providing commentary to make it dramatic. The drama. We need more drama from you. We need some play calls here. Dallas, the gamers we fuck asked. Which character was the most fun to design? Ooh. Ooh. Oh, one I can't talk about. <laughs> How about out of the ones that you can talk about and not being obtuse? Uh, I like being monster. obtuse. <laughs> uh, the challenge of Spider-Man was fun. Um, That's not how I remember you saying it. <laughs> like figuring out, uh, figuring out how to make things work in miniature is always interesting. Um, he was. Um, I, I think I mean, just I, I, I've I've enjoyed everything. My uh, my favorite thing out of Spider Man was the fact that 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 born the phrase the Spider Man conundrum, which sounds like a really crazy conspiracy novel. But yeah, he was he was definitely an interesting challenge for you guys from engineering to creation to everything else. Let's put some highlights oh. up on this thing. Oh. Putting highlights on cross. But going back to the favorite character to paint, like, um, from my standpoint, actually, well, I thought Spider-Man was a blast. The one that I've had the most fun with was actually Captain America. Super fun. And Super I think part of that was when I started painting him, I wasn't super thrilled with how it was going, but I kind of soldiered through. <laughs> and by the end of it, I came out with this with this Captain America that I was, oh, I was so happy with it. I'm so happy with it. It's just fantastic. And it was like the shield was perfect and super fun to paint. The blues came out just right. And sometimes that's just the trick. I find that's the biggest trick that I have when painting. Is it's like half the time I wind up hating whatever I'm doing a quarter to halfway through. And I'm like, I should just strip this whole thing or throw it in the garbage and quit. But if you stick with it and you get like, you get those highlights on, you get the wash done. Sometimes when you just, when you just seal it, when you just matte varnish it and get rid of the gloss from all the inks and stuff and the paints, you look at it, you're like, this doesn't look anything There's like it did before. There's a very popular discussion about the ugly phase in painting. It's just the, like, Painting is a process, so sometimes you get wrapped up in the what it looks like now, but you're not looking at what it's going to look like, and because you know it takes it takes a few layers, or it takes a you know it needs the application of the next step to really bring about what you're achieving. So never get down on yourself in the middle of a paint job, right? It's like always keep your eye on that end goal and stay positive that you're gonna come out on the other side. Cause like, even the most beautiful paint jobs in the world all have what's very commonly called the ugly phase. <laughs> it's, 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 just, it's, a, it's, a, it's a funny way to say it, right? It's, it's just the art, right? It's a, the part where you're still working through the colors and the layers and they're okay. It'll be great. It'll be great. Yeah. Perfect. I'm just going to add some little highlights. I'm just going to add a happy little tree. Can you add a happy little tree for me, Dallas? I could. Just a happy little tree right here. A little tree tattoo on crossbones? If you give him a mom tattoo, choice. That'd be perfect. Just a nice classic sailor mom tattoo. We can do that. I know you can. I believe in you. With guns like that, it would shock me if the man this didn't have some classic like Sailor Jerry tattoos. I don't remember if anybody watched or. Well, he didn't get a chance to punch the world yeah, last he didn't get week. It was very sad. We were right there, and then you obliterated him with Red Skull. 
because I activated Captain Marvel oh, first. Oh man, Red Skull. That was awesome. Deep. Bring up this magenta. Yeah, I'm gonna highlight this and then do like another wash to richen and darken. Josh, what's going on, man? Josh, pick us up here. The chats are loving it. They're just, they're just loving what you the the therapeutic <laughs> nature of two chuckleheads painting for a you know some amount of time. They're loving your wise words. Wise words. Yeah. We have a que question. Yeah. Are you guys going to uh, varnish or clear coat your models? What is your opinion on that? Absolutely. Every time, 100%. There are no wrong answers in painting, but not varnishing your models is a wrong answer. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know. I So way back in the day when little Will was learning how to paint, and that mostly meant grabbing like craft barrel paints from his mom's really old collection, and slapping heavy, heavy coats on, I used to be of the mind that the shinier the miniature was, the more the awesome it was. It was like, look how cool so, this thing. So I go back and look at some of those fantastical creatures that I painted, and you can't even see the miniature. It's so glossy. Have you ever seen a shimmery dragon? Uh, I have. But have you ever seen a dragon who's constantly under the effects of severe lens flare? Oh, my. Because that's, that's what little Will used to think was amazing. And it's not that there's anything wrong with that. I was very happy with it at the time. Um, but, yeah, you should, you should seal your models, miniatures, your, your things, your dudes, your characters. Both being asked about your highlights. What are you using to uh, uh, highlight the purple, and what are you using to highlight the black? So for the purple on my side, I'm using the uh, Hexed Lichen and Warlord Purple from Game Color for Vallejo because I didn't, neither of those colors by themselves was what I wanted for the Zemo purple. Um, but their forces combined has made a very nice match to the art magenta. Nice. And so I'm just basically, I'm taking that initial mix of like 50-50 and adding more and more Warlord purple to it. And I'll probably grab a bone color here at some point and yeah, go even further. Um, I'm using a mix of two colors I randomly grabbed. <laughs> I, <laughs> Not only will he grab any paintbrush that's handy, I, he will grab any paint that I, is handy. I, 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 I literally will. Like sometimes I'm just like, oh, there's a little bit of brown on my palette. I'll just put this into whatever I'm painting. Uh, so it looks like <laughs> dead white and whatever black this was I put out on my palette. Um, I think it was the black ink. The Niegro ink. It's one of my favorite things about the Vallejo is that they have both the Spanish and the English was, on them. I think it was the black ink. I just grabbed two colors and mixing them together to make a gray. Uh, and I could put some. I could put some color in there too. I could put a little blue. A little, add a little blue. Whoop, come down. To make like a blue white. That'd be great. What do we think? All right. Time for color theory, I'm gonna Dallas. Do that. I'm going to put a little blue into my highlight. Should we use more of a yellow white or a blue white for the highlight color on this? Uh, bl uh, blue white. Wait, no, for the purple? Yeah. Add yellow to add one. Yeah. Bone white it is. He's going away, Josh. Sorry. Oh. Came out real fast. Also, apologies about your tablecloth, Josh. I know you just got it. <laughs> That's the noise I like to hear. We knew we were going to be painting. We knew we were going to be painting. I, bl I blame you, Josh. This is really your fault. Oh. Oh my. I like it. Uh, I sing. Well, yeah. If, when if Josh I'm, isn't talking, clearly we're gonna get we're gonna get songs by Dallas. If I'm working, I'm singing. Yeah, well, I'm gonna wash this guy. I'm gonna wash this guy again. 
What else is going on in chat land? What do they want to know about? What do they want to hear? Instructor 911 asks, what attack ability is your favorite? Ooh, attack ability? Yeah, that's pretty tough. Zemo's Steel Rush is deceptively powerful. Like, it, it's only a sixth strength attack, but it only costs two. And when you combine that with, like, Master Swordsman to get rerolls on all attack dice and the medium move that you get out of it, it's, it's pretty crazy. It's pretty awesome. It allows you to effectively turn Zemo into a yo-yo. Which I've watched Dallas do a number of times. Chainsaw yo-yo. feel like a proud papa. Chainsaw yo-yo. It is like a, it is like a chainsaw yo-yo. So I think Steel Rush is really cool. Um, obviously, Unabeam with Iron Man is pretty amazing because I love the visual of him just blasting through an entire line of fools as his little last-ditch effort when things are not going his way. He's like, Friday, fire it up. Fire it up. So those ones are really fun. I think they're very, you know, they're very cinematic and they just play to that whole idea of the narrative because you got you got Iron Man down and out but not ready to give up. He's using that arc or that Unibeam blast that drains most of his energy, but you gotta win the day. You gotta win the day. I mean, that's the cool part about the game is that, you know. Like I, like, I, like I keep saying, it's like, when was Spider-Man the best at being Spider-Man? When his back was against the wall. That's what the game kind of does with the stuff. Yeah, it, I mean, I think one of the big things about, you know, enjoying any game, but especially a miniatures game, you always want to have that kind of explosive option when things are going against you, you don't want a snowball effect. And power is a really fun way to kind of build that into the game and also make it very thematic. Mm -hmm. No! All right. He's Betrayed like me, boss. Brush. Betrayed me. I'm gonna use the poor man's eraser here. Goodbye, mistake. So yeah, anybody out there who doesn't know this trick yet, which I learned from L. Dallas, uh, if you wind up making a little mistake and you catch it fast enough, a wet brush a slightly damp brush will erase it right away and won't take any of the paint off from underneath. Truth. So. That is accurate. All right. I think I'm going to finish this magenta, and then I'm going to do some assembly. Oh, man. My crossbones is getting real close. Yeah? You're almost done already? Yeah. You're a monster. Talk to us, Josh. He needs another color brown or another color black. What's going on? Uh, another question. What did you guys use to paint the cars in the Porsche set? Were they airbrushed or from a spray can, et cetera? Uh, the, they were painted with a base coat with an airbrush, but that's it. What? What? I painted the taxi with an airbrush. You painted the taxi with Oh, yes, 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 yes. Uh, the, the silver car was painted with a base coat of an airbrush and then hand brushed. Uh, and Chick can tell you how he painted the, uh, the, the cab. He painted the cab. Yeah, I mean, the cab was just, I mean, it was just a very traditional airbrush kind of painting technique where you start with, you start with your mid-tone yellow and then you do a little bit of spraying for the darks and then you do some spot highlights to get that kind of sheen. Um, one of the things that's really cool with an airbrush, which I didn't do for the taxi when I painted it, was, I'm putting this guy away, and now I'm gonna assemble Josh. We're gonna let that magenta dry. Um, is that if you get candy colors or translucents, uh, you can do some really cool stuff with getting that kind of auto body sheen or the Iron Man, you know, hot rod red color. And that is pretty amazing, so. Woohoo, you can see it. All right, sweet. I'm gonna clip this guy out. Then we're gonna see how good my memory is because I don't have a I don't have an assembly guide in front of me. I'm pretty straightforward. Yeah. I I think we'll be safe. I think we got this. So obviously like any kit, you wanna use a good pair of clippers. You wanna have a good hobby knife with you. And then just plastic glue away.
Now I'm going to make sound effects because it's what I have to do. Part of hobby. Of it is. It is. It's crazy fingers. Yeah. It's like, nah, I he's, am Modoc. He's very monologue for sure. All right, let's get this Clint. And how's Crossbones going? How you doing over there, bud? I'm all right. It's all having right? Fun, having fun. Where are you at? I haven't even looked. Ooh, you are almost done. Look at you go. Yeah, I should wait for that to dry. You probably <laughs> should. You can always wet blend it. That's okay. And put some highlights on his skin. Yeah? What did you wind up going with with the skin? Because I know that one of the things we were talking about is the Vallejo game colors have some really bright kind of fantasy style skins, but you were looking for something a little more realistic. Yeah, I just mixed the skin tone over here. A little green, a little red, a little flesh tone, a little drop of yellow to make my own skin tone. I just basically took all the colors of the rainbow. It's super inspirational, Dallas. Well, I wanted like a, a darker, like rough skin. I figure he goes out in the sun a lot. I figure he punches boxes. So he probably doesn't wear sleeves very often, yeah, that's for sure. they're pretty scuffed up arms. You know, they've seen some wear. So I wanted to get that sort of weathered, toughened flesh look. So That classic cowboy leather skin. Mm-hmm. Mm. So I had to mix a little something up to get that. And then I used a couple, two flesh brushes that I just kind of made up. Um... And then now I'm just gonna highlight it. It's done. Like base coat, wash, wash, highlight. Base coat, wash, wash, highlight. Base coat, wash, wash, highlight. No black lining. No, I use the I'll use the ink between uh, that I put on the uh, suit as I build that in. I'll I'll let that slide between the elements to create my dark line. Make my done pile and my scrapey pile. This is the super. This is the super zen point of assembly where you just go through and you're cleaning everything. And Josh is like, "You're killing me over here," because Josh refuses to talk ever. More. Like he has nothing to say. Highlight. Just one more highlight. Little tiny dots. So easy. Don't forget about this guy. Ooh, yeah, look at them arms. Some beefy, some true, like, grade A beef right there. Just punching away, punching away. Josh, it's unnerving to have you over in the corner being so silent. It's unnatural, man. I'm just silently judging him. Are you judging? I would like a live commentary on this judgment here. Judge me. <laughs> judge me. <laughs> That's that was, the judgment? That was the weakest judgment. You guys are doing pretty good. You're pretty good. You're pretty good. pretty good. Oh, man. Come on, Josh. Bring this out better. Accentuate this muscle. Accentuate it? Yeah. How much more accentuated does it need to be? For me? <laughs> so much more accentuated. Just giving it some definition. So it reads really well in miniature. And this is why we go back and forth between things. Because in my brain, I'm starting to rush. <laughs> Don't rush. I know. This is why I'll go back to like painting Zemo here in a second. Because I can only assemble miniatures for so long before I lose it. <sighs> yeah, perfect. We get this little poof cloud going on here. This little exhaust port. So so beautiful. I don't know. It's not. It's fine. 
Now, I will say I'm excited to start talking more about MODOK and what he can do in the game. I think people are excited, too. He was another one that was really fun to kind of go through and be like, okay, well, some people know MODOK is, some people don't. I mean, if you ever watch Superhero Squad with your kids or as a kid, you definitely know who MODOK is because that guy, he was a great little sidekick character in that for the, for the villains. Him and Abomination, classic. All the fart jokes ever. That's right, Josh. Fart jokes. But yeah, it was fun to kind of, well, and he's, a, he's really our first character that dives into the mystic attack types and that telepathy and the psionics and stuff. So kind of defining that through a character as zany and maniacal as Modoc was uh, definitely an interesting, I don't know, not even interesting, it was just downright fun. <laughs> just all of a sudden come in and be like, this is what he does. And, and all of his ability names are, I, I mean, I got a kick out of them for sure. And there's one type of fun I like is downright. Downright fun. It's kind of like down home. Yeah, kind of. But yeah, you get, I mean, anytime I can name things with imbecile, all the world is a weapon to MODOK, fantastic. Bow to the will of MODOK, so many good things. You have a card over there. Why do you got a card over there? That's my Zemo reference card so that I knew how to paint the Zemos. Oh, okay. It's not a MODOK card because that's not what I asked you for. You brought me exactly what I asked you for, which was the Zemo card. Because normally I go off my phone, like I'll pull up a lot of reference on my phone and then I'll just use that when I have a question about where something goes. Josh, you should zoom. Are you on me? <gasps> yeah. Oh, I'm in the way. So I'm going to... Magnify through I'm gonna your do glasses. Something. I'm going to do something. I'm going to put a little highlight right here on the top. Zoom down to Dallas map. Put a highlight right here on top of this knee pad. Mm. And then I want to kind of define what kind of, like, this is not a soft texture, this is a hard texture. So I'm going to use my paintbrush and I'm going to draw like a little, like a little line. <laughs> it's beautiful. And it kind of shows that this might be a more uh, uh, rigid material, right? And it shows like maybe it's a little glossy, like it's, it's, it's an armor plate that's a little glossy, so it's a... A little quick trick for uh, you know table topping to make it table topping, and then if you go a little higher, like that's a pretty dark gray. If I go a little higher on these uh, more rigid materials, it makes them even more glossy, right? That, that line's a little thick, but I can fix it later. I like this. Uh, Holster. It makes it just look a little more glossy. All right, Josh. It's about time for the for the exciting shot of this assembly. You've suffered through watching me scrape stuff forever. Now we're gonna watch this thing fit together. Oh, oh. let's get my fingers out of the way. This part's really fun too. I don't have glue on it yet, but who needs glue? Because where we're going, we don't need glue. Boom! These are always fun. Just a little like doop. Oh, perfect. I mean, in the end, you need glue. It fits so good. You do. You don't want his. You don't want his back burners to fall out because you didn't glue them. I guess we'll do that now. Uh, we'll do it on this piece because that would be the smart way to do it. Sweet. Modoc backburners. I gotta say, I've not used this specific type of plastic glue yet, and this brush is just the cutest little guy. <laughs> oh, it's ridiculous. Great. Yeah. Oh, you're still on me, Josh? Mm -hmm. I better put it on right then. That would be embarrassing. I love this. I love this. There we go. I mean, it's super, you know, 
it's it's very that's satisfying it's very satisfying yeah it's like when you watch the candles get crushed by presses and stuff and they spew out all kinds of weird oh wax yeah they spew out like wax and stuff it's pretty fun uh-oh okay good dry fit for the win let's get this face on here Oop. Ah, this brush i love it and yet i hate it <laughs> It's so ridiculously tiny. Why is it so small? That's one thing I will say for the person who asked about uh, adhesives, like glue. I really like the, the brush on liquid stuff when it comes to plastic glue. You get a lot more control. And uh, you don't really have to worry about. Whoop. Getting a little too excited. There we go. Fully built. There you go. I haven't painted Modoc yet. Um, I mean, I'll show you. I'll show you. I'll show you so good. Oop. Um, I think there's kind. Of, there can be an argument to leave his his for me for leaving his arms off. Um, but it really depends on how. Depends on how far you want to go, I think. I, th I, I painted mine fully assembled, as you can see. He's not completely painted yet. He's still, he's still whip. Um, and I didn't have any troubles reaching anything. Everything is uh, very well exposed, and all the elements are, are, are nice and pulled away that you can get in there and, and do what you need to do. Also, I have a rule. I pretty much assemble everything and then paint. Because if my brush can't reach it, you can't see it. It's an excellent rule. I think I've stage assembled a couple of things. A lot of times that's because the thing's so big that it's hard to hold when it's completely assembled. Yeah, or absolutely. if you're airbrushing. Absolutely. I mean, if you plan on airbrushing stuff, um, stage assembly is really good because you don't have to worry about masking as much. So if you're going to airbrush your Modoc or you want to do any kind of airbrushing, leaving the arms off might work because then you can worry less about the two different colors that you have to worry about. I mean, the other thing is, um, it's all it's all about also deciding the. Uh, we've been talking a lot about. Like, Are you going back to the destiny? Destiny. Oh my gosh, this so destiny talk. You, you choose the destiny of the miniature, <laughs> and then that's going to choose some of your techniques, right? If the destiny is tabletop, just assemble it, paint it, because the if your brush can't reach it, you can't see it. Now, if you're painting for competition, that's you're choosing the destiny of that miniature, and it changes it. So there's a, there's a different criteria there of what you might want to consider when approaching that miniature. Now he's got his do-rag. Yeah. It's perfect. Oh, he missed a little bit. That's just me being sloppy. See? Told you I was being sloppy. No, that's all right. That's all right. We can clean it. We can clean it. We got this. It's okay to make mistakes. Take the camera away from my shame, Josh. It's okay to make mistakes. <laughs> there we go. Perfect. Problem solved. Mistakes are how we learn. So is it's that okay. it? Yeah. That is true, actually. If you did everything right the first time, you yeah, didn't you learn didn't, anything. You didn't learn anything. I make all kinds of mistakes. It's kind of like that whole, you know, this game looks really cool, but I don't. I don't know if I, I can't paint that way. Well, no. You don't you, need to. You don't, one, that's not even required, and two, no one paints that way out of the box. Destiny! So, you just, gotta choose the destiny. Just get paint on it, and then it's an amazingly painted miniature. You know my favorite painted miniature of all time is? Tell us. The Tell one us. you just finished. There you go. Beautiful. So warm. But it's true. I. I mean, who's ever going to be like, I don't know. There's probably people out there who might do it, but if you put down a bunch of miniatures you took time to paint, I automatically they look, they look awesome to me because I'd much rather play against painted miniatures than unpainted miniatures, especially when it comes to these characters. And there's so many simple ways to approach them and get great results. And that's what we're going to teach. We are. We are going to teach Like, look at that simple. 
I did two I mean, washes you painted, and a highlight. And you painted I a crossbones in like no time flat. Painted there. a crossbones. He is ninety percent done. There's just a little bit of detail I want to do, but I'm 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 gonna almost call this crossbones done. And it was two washes, and then and then I mixed some washes. Like there's some elements like his mask and his gloves. I put a little blue into the black wash, and then his. Um, his, some of his other elements, I mixed a little brown um, ink into the uh, black wash. And so I put that on there. So I did one wash of just black. Then the second wash was kind of two washes, but they're in mm -hmm. two different places. So it kind of counts one step. So one blue and one brown just to change it and richen it up. And then now I'm just highlighting with a mix of white and black to make a gray. and. That's just because I just didn't take the time to look for a gray. This gray here would have worked just fine, this ghost gray. But I just made one up. It also allows me to vary it. So I have the white and the black on my palette, and I can just kind of vary it. So I'm just highlighting it. And this is like, and then like we said earlier, the skin was base coat, wash, wash, highlight. Mm -hmm. And I threw in another real quick highlight. So what is that, four steps per thing? It's not bad. Not too shabby, and I'm happy with my crossbones, because then I'll play him again next time we play and I'm going to punch beautiful the world I will say that you know you did it really you did the blacks really quick I have a two-step method that I use for, you do have a two-step method and it comes out black. just about as good <laughs> so you have a two-step method I did I think on Black Widow I did I did two washes and a highlight as well for her um, her suit I think it was just wash wash Highlights, or maybe it was what? Oh, I did the highlight too. So I did a wash, highlight, wash, wash, mm -hmm. highlight. So four steps. Nice. Yeah, I mean that's reasonable. No, that's it's great. totally reasonable. I like you said, it's it comes down to like what you want to do and how you want to accomplish stuff. Yeah, if I was going to enter in a painting competition, it'd be a different philosophy. It'd have a different destiny. So I'd approach it a little bit different. But this is my, this is for gaming, and it's perfect for that. Well, yeah, if it's going to go on the tabletop, it's should never wind up in a glass case. The, the point is to look on the shelf, you know, for a competition. So when I ask, what is that two-step method you were talking about? So what I do is you grab... Teaser for next time. Teaser for next time. There no, you go. No, no, tell them. Uh, I am, we are no, going to show... <laughs> <laughs> and that's all the time we have, apparently, because I'm about <laughs> to murder Dallas. Um, yeah, I, we are going to show it, I think, next time on the stream when we go. Um, but it, it basically involves, it involves a Vallejo black glaze. And it's similar to what Dallas did, but the difference is, is that the black glazes have this, they kind of have this sediment in them. And so they, they do this really interesting thing where they add texture as well as adding color. Um, and I've used it forever for like all black leathers for the most part. And it's super easy and you can kind of control it based on how many times you wash the thing. But I used it on Red Skull, I used it on Crossbones. Um, yeah, yeah, it looks really great. It's fantastic. And again, it's really simple. Uh, and there's a lot of different options that you can do based on the, the color, the base tone you use for your gray and on all this stuff. So we'll show it next time. So, uh, yeah, we're going to do, are we going to do what we talked about, like with a red skull there? I hope so. Yeah, we got a pretty good idea for a red skull. Where uh, I think we're going to have... Uh, Schick is going to paint the two-step black, yeah. and then I will show how to do three-step um, cosmic cube glow. There's three something step. there's something really quaint about a no-arm, no-legged Modoc just floating there. It's cute. He's yeah, and we're going to be doing that. You. We're going to be doing that throughout the different streams when we do painting and hobbying. We're going to kind of grab one miniature and we're going to go through some different techniques. We're going to pass them back and forth just to show you guys kind of how everyone approaches things differently and hopefully you learn something or find something that you like and then you can apply it in your own way. Um, the, the Vallejo glaze trick that I've been using on my blacks forever wasn't taught to me that way. It was actually for something entirely different, but because I played with it, I quickly discovered that, that it really worked well for me and I liked it and it got me results that I wanted. So I kept using it and I have shown a few folks over the time, over the years, how to do it. Crossbones, punching his way into the paintbrush. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
It's so metally. I'm looking forward to like <laughs> the pop, the one, the character that gets the pop song. Oh, well. Like who gets the pop song? Who gets the pop songs? Who does? It's gonna be a, that's gonna be a million dollar question. Oh, here we go. Put that little, that little poot on there. Pooter. Look at that, look at that beautiful Modoc. Just sitting there. He's so yeah. handsome. He's so handsome. So handsome. I will say I'm a little trepidatious to paint this guy because it's a lot of gold. Oh no, and I pushed too hard. Broke. I flew too close to the sun. That was just my fault. And broken. No, he's fine. We just have to reapply the glue. Just push a little too hard. He'll be fine. Um boop -a -doop -a -doop -a -doop. We'll let him dry now. Stop with the hand. Oh, how do I cross right. those shoulders? You got that crossbones all wrapped up yet? He's not done. I'm not, I'm He's not done. I'm done. You, d you done? Yeah, you done? done enough. All right, done enough. Well, I guess if you're done with your crossbones, we'll wrap this first hobby and hang episode of Atomic Mass Transmissions live. Is that all the time we have? No, we have all the time in the world, but we'll be back next week, so we might as well save something for I mean, that. I could paint for another 45 minutes easily. Like, you could paint for the rest of the night, I could let's, just be paint for, like, let's be honest. That's what you do. Real. Look, Captain America, oh, ready to go. Well, that is a good teaser for next episode, oh, as well as oops. the Red Skull that we're working on. <gasps> Captain America versus Red Skull. I know, it's perfect. Dun, dun, it's dun, like we dun, couldn't dun, write dun, this dun. stuff better, Josh. We couldn't write it better. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Hopefully you guys had fun. Come back and see us next week, Thursday, 1 p.m. Pacific time. As well, check out our social media and our website, AtomicMassGames.com, for all the latest information on Marvel Crisis Protocol and Atomic Mass Games itself. We had fun hanging out with you. And maybe some painted miniatures. Maybe some painted miniatures. I think I'm on. Yeah? Because I think I can do that now, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can start showing stuff. So you'll start seeing all of the fruits of our labor here in the office as well. So thank you again, guys. Have fun, be safe, and we will see you next week. Bye-bye. I'm going to paint something. I'm just going to do it now. I'm just going to take the rest of the day off and paint. <laughs>